Well, what a change from the last episode. Everything's as high as an elephant's eye, and the place has been buzzing. Welcome back to Nature Garden Live. Well, yes, what a change from the last episode. I was talking about silent spring and good news and bad news and all the depressing things that we've been hearing about recently as a result of climate change. But it's now mostly good news, I'm glad to say. I've had hoverflies, I've had honeybees, bumblebees, butterflies and dragonflies. So I'm really pleased that over that period of a month or so since we last met, things have changed for the better. So let's have a look at what's been coming. Well, I expect you can see the pond is pretty much covered in duckweed at the moment. That's not because I've been slacking, but rather because a couple of weeks ago, I had a visit from a female hawker dragonfly and she laid her eggs in the pond amongst the weed. And so I don't really want to um, disturb it while they are still possibly waiting to hatch. But I'm hoping next year or the year after I may have my own supply of dragonflies. We shall see. The thistle and wild carrot have made a wonderful display this year. The flower heads have been literally buzzing. There have been several species of hoverfly as well as bumblebees, honeybees, butterflies and dragonflies. The bumblebees have been mostly white tail and buff tail with one or two carder bees. Of the many hoverflies, my favourite is the hornet mimic, a striking monster. The more numerous hoverflies are smaller, but they still have a charm of their own, like this marmalade hoverfly. And although they have a rather negative reputation, let's not forget the so-called housefly. I can remember from my school days that peacock butterflies were quite common, but still seemed exotic. And who doesn't like the stunning colours of the red admiral? They've been showing an interest in my nettle patch, and although I haven't had the courage to root around the leaves, I'm hoping to find caterpillars a little later on. I've also had small whites, the old comma or two, and some gatekeepers. Now you may have noticed the comma butterfly was sitting on some ragwort, which is not popular with cattle farms. However, it is with cinnabar moths, who have these tiger-striped caterpillars. They can become a bit of a plague if you have too many, but this infestation was very minor. Well, what about you? Could you put aside some small part of your garden to encourage nature? And you will find benefits that you can reap later on. So I'm going to leave you with some mindfulness moments to show you what you could look forward to if you do just that. See you next time.